Albert Wunsch is an attorney in New Jersey. You wouldn't want to wind up on his jury because you, you're liable to laugh your way through the trial. He's, he's a funny guy, and also he's a great book collector. He collects more books than the New York Public Library. He has a ladder in his house with all the books he collects at home in Jersey where you can get away with it because it's called You Have Space. In Manhattan, we wouldn't do that. Now, Jerome Sharon wrote a book about uh, Joe DiMaggio. It's called The Long Vigil, okay? And I have not read it, but Albert did. And, you know, whenever you do one of these shows, if you don't read the book, you've got to have someone who has. Otherwise, you sound really dumb. <laughs> or you're, you're asking a lot of questions that are not relevant. And I do that anyway. But here they are now. Here, here's Albert and Jerome. Come on out, you guys, and let's talk about Joe DiMaggio a little bit. I, I think more to the point we want to talk about Marilyn Monroe. So if you guys can uh, move over here to our, our little truth serum table. This is the table where you learn to tell the truth because there's a camera on you. But don't look at the camera. Look at okay. Steve. Come on, sit down. Okay. How are you? Good to meet you, Jerome. Yeah. Right. You don't have to carry a cup. We don't, it's a television show. Come on, sit down. He must be used to working in a barber shop. <laughs> Giuseppe. Uh, sit down. Where are you going? Over here. Oh, over there? Next I'll be over yeah, there. Right over there yeah. we, got, we, we made room for you. All right, so Albert does actually read books, and you're an author. You wrote right. about Joe DiMaggio. How many books you wrote? About 40. Well, see, you're a seasoned pro. You've done too many of these things. No, they're always difficult to do. I mean, uh, every time you're working on a book, it's like dying and being reborn again. So well, you know, having an interview with a guy like you is like dying some nights because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read the damn thing. Well, but I mentioned that. I mentioned that on the air. You know, I'm honest about it. You know, uh, when, when you, have you written all biographies? Oh, no, no, I wrote, I write mostly novels. Yeah, we've met before. Yes. We but I just wonder, I, I want to, yeah. you know, push the refresh right. button here for yeah, everybody. Sure. Uh, so y y the, the, the biggest selling one is what? Which it's called The Secret Life of Emily Dickinson. All and right. We talked about that the last time. Well, we, let's not w use yeah. that as a frame of reference because yeah. they weren't here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now Albert, Albert read this one. Yes. And he uh, has a little review, I think, or something, right? Yes. You know, um, th this book is called Joe DiMaggio. It's going to be coming out in March. Um, it is a, uh, a perspective about Joe DiMaggio coming from a fan, yeah. um, someone who, you know, uh, watched him play and, and, and had great um, reverence for him, and about a man, uh, you know, Joe DiMaggio, who really became, uh, you know, he was an enigma, and, and he was somebody who uh, became more of an enigma uh, of an enigma as he left baseball. I think he became one when he married Marilyn Monroe. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is this, is that, you know, what Jerome points out is that uh, she really needed him, and then, then ultimately he needed her. Really? And it was started out that, that she needed the legitimacy that he was going to bring for her. So it was a reverse codependency. And then all of a sudden she sprung out, you know, like the, uh, the, you know, the, the butterfly coming from the cocoon, and, and he was unable to, to keep her captured at that point. Uh -huh. And that she was, you know, obsessed with, um, you know, other men and, and uh, you know, Arthur Miller and, and, and things mm -hmm. along those lines. And that you um, mean people along those lines. Well, <laughs> people along those lines. Yeah. And, and that, uh, you know, it, it was a, a tragedy for Joe but he just could not, uh, he, he couldn't walk in her world. And he wanted her to be back in his world, which was the world where he was the, the center of attention, the man who was being protected. Uh, and then all of a sudden now he was becoming the protector. Now and, was, uh, was Joe DiMaggio uh, uh, an innocent, clean cut guy? Or was he like Arthur Miller? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a little bit more virtuous than Arthur Miller, but the problem was that as Al said, uh, she was coming out of her cocoon, yeah. and he was going back into one. You know, he'd right. already retired, and this was just at the beginning of her, of her career. So they didn't come together at the right point. Now, when, when Joe DiMaggio was playing for the Yankees, which was most of his career. Right, all of his career. All of it. Was it the entire career? Yes. How old was he? Entire started? professional career. He was 36 when he retired. Well, how old was he when he started? He was 21. Yeah. You see, like A-Rod's age then. Yes, he was, A-Rod was a little bit younger when he started. Yeah. But, uh, Same kind of trip too, isn't it? 
I mean, that's a similar. And also, they were right-handed hitters in Yankee yeah. Stadium, so Both they from immigrant families. Yeah, and and, and Very took similar. and took uh, uh, little left turns and came back to the real event, right. which was to be champs. Yeah, DiMaggio was always a champ. From the very beginning, yeah. from the first time he appeared in Yankee Stadium, and he just had this sense of style, this sense of glamour, this sense of power, this sense of form that I don't think any other player ever had. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that he was the greatest player in the world, but in terms of his form, of looking at him, yeah. I mean, he was a picture. Yeah, and he carried just himself very well all the time. Beautifully. But, yeah. but, you know, he, he would, I don't think he would have done well now, if, if that celebrity now would not have worked for him, I, you know, it, it, it because of the the privacy that he wanted and that he craved, and and the type of person that was very protected, too sure would would kind of right. you know keep a, a an arm around him and make sure that people wouldn't be able to get to him and stuff. In this day and age, with the internet and and with the fact that information is like at everyone's well, fingertips. Well, the guy in those days who would be like now is Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mantle was the one he, he passes on the baton yeah, to. Yeah, but you know. he's also, t that's the way we are now. I mean, you know, the contemporary ball player now is uh, always. Rough around the edges. Yeah. You know, I mean, whereas, whereas DiMaggio would be there in the suit, would have the tie, um, you know, would be very, very conscious of his image. And, and there was an interesting uh, aspect that, that Jerome talked about in the book was that, and, and I never really thought about this, but it's true, he didn't like the old timer games because. Right. He didn't want to disappoint the fans and disappoint the people who remembered him as being the, the, the maestro of the, uh, of, of the outfield. But I think it, it goes even deeper than that. I mean, he had a profound sense of form, and when he yeah. couldn't display that form, he had to disappear from baseball. That's one reason why he didn't like the old-timers game. is not that he would simply disappoint people, but he couldn't express himself anymore on the field, and therefore he didn't want anything to do with it. The spring training really ought to be, not in Tampa, it ought to be in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will be. <laughs> that's why I used to go to shop for my Little League teams. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's what Columbus first discovered the Dominican Republic. Isn't that right? Uh, Isn't that where down that area, Roma? Guadalupe, Was it Roma? And, and all that area. I think so. Yeah. You know, uh, it, no, no, uh, the Joe DiMaggio and the Marilyn Monroe things. I, I want to tell you something. You know, I knew uh, when when Kennedy was president, mm. and there's always rumors about Marilyn Monroe. You and I, Albert, talk about this a lot. You know, I never really bought that he was that Marilyn Monroe was running around with John Kennedy. She, she was, was, but I didn't like. She was. It. Yeah. I didn't like and thinking. She was not that. only running around with Jack, but also with Bob. Yeah. Well, I didn't like thinking that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when I was in L.A. at the time, and, and they would send for pizzas. You know, the U.S. Mm. Air Force won. I mean, now it's a whole different ballgame. Everybody's, everybody's watching everybody, and it's a camera's on everybody except me. You know, I look at mm. Steve. But, you know, when, uh, when there's a, 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 a thing going on with, with uh, taking your private life onto the, onto the government, uh, Kennedy got away with it pretty much. He ordered uh, pizzas from La Barbara on uh, San Vicente in L.A., which you're yeah. probably familiar with. And he would, uh, he would uh, very curiously order uh, 12 pizzas with pepperoni and Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> you know, which was really not what you usually get out of Domino's. <laughs> there is a domino effect, yeah. but <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah, so that 20 minutes. Funny, but, you know, was he really having that, was Joe DiMaggio around when he was, when Kennedy was having an affair with? Uh, Oof. Yeah, he was around. He was sadly mourning the whole thing. He was always around. I mean, in a sense, uh, he was always uh, in the shadow. And what most people don't know is that they were going to be married again. Oh. And she'd already had a wedding dress. And uh, we don't know what would have happened with that second marriage. It probably would have dissolved like the first one. But that's one of the saddest facts of his life is that she, he she was beautiful. Oh, she was incredibly beautiful. I mean, you know, you can't compare anybody right now. Elizabeth no. Taylor in her finest was beautiful also. I, mean, yeah. we, I don't think we have anybody that, you know, I mean, there are some who fake it almost. Yeah. But I, she, I, don't, I don't know how to but, say but this. But, Julie, it wasn't simply the beauty. She had a kind of a energy, a yeah, kind of uh, power and yeah. intelligence that people just don't. Well, she was sexy. But she yeah, was but really sexy. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny, and I never really thought about it this way until I, I read uh, Jerome's book that when you've, at that point in time where she meets up with DiMaggio, she has really had a, 
a, a, a couple of death blows to her career. Absolutely. Her, her calendar, the nude calendar comes yeah. out, which previous to that point, any actress who had been caught doing nude photographs was automatically banned would not be able to get a, exactly. a role in any other type of film. I have one in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then um, her, her biography had been sort of changed. She was the orphan who made good and had done good. Well, then all of a sudden her mother comes up as being someone who was in a mental institution. Her father was someone who no one knew, you know, we couldn't pinpoint who it was. So that you have a, a scenario where everything was crumbling around her. And she needed an anchor who was going to be able to bring her back into respectability. And Joe DiMaggio yes. gave her that opportunity yes. because no one was going to mess with the man they called Joe D. Yes. So what do, what do you think of Jerome's writing here? I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it you know, because of the fact that I got to meet Joe DiMaggio a number of times um, at, uh, you know, in, in the 70s and the 80s because he would spend a lot of time in Fort Lee. And I actually had brought something here that demonstrated that... Um, uh, what happened to him in the end of his career in which he was uh, just signing thousands of items yeah. and getting a uh, you know money for uh, bats yeah. and baseballs and things along Player those lines certification and so. it's signed by Joe DiMaggio yeah wow well that's Jerry's signature <laughs> <laughs> so now we wait a minute we gotta get this book now which is called what it's called Joe DiMaggio that's it? The Long Vigil. Yeah, the Long the Vigil. Meaning is Long Vigil for Marilyn Monroe. And just one of the facts about the memorabilia is that he could earn in one day, Joey, more than he ever earned in his entire career as a Yankee. And, and he made $100,000. So, I mean, yeah. like he, at, you know, figuring dollar wise at, at, at his point in time, uh, you know, $100,000 is a lot of money. Yes, now you was. have a guy like Albert Puyos. Um, who they're talking about could be making thirty million dollars a year. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, come on, a box of crackers is five bucks, you know. <laughs> it's a different world. But thank you for being here. Well, I thank really you so and much. thank you for coming again. You know, yes. I mean, to my life, you're yeah. such a great author, and yeah. I know that you probably have all of his books, right? Well, I, I, I have. I had um, actually two that he signed for me now, so we're oh. all set with well, that. And he's working one. on you're another like one. DiMaggio. He's working <laughs> on. A, he's working on another one on Lincoln <laughs> soon, <laughs> and I'm going to be talking Good. to him about that. So we'll get him back. back on. I hope so. All right. So it's called Joe DiMaggio, and and uh, you'll find Mitchell. it at uh, at Borders, right? Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, he might <laughs> but go quickly <laughs> to Borders. Yeah. Yeah. No, they didn't close all their stores. And, and can I be classified as the other Jersey guy on this show tonight? No. Since come on, no, I mean, you know, we had uh, you got the one, and I'm the other Jersey guy. You're the, you're the, the uh, would be. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I really appreciate Albert Wunsch. Thank you. You're great, and uh, and we'll see you again too, Jerome. Thank you. Soon Thank too. you. Okay. Sure. Be right back. Let's take another little break here, and. Uh, I think what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, order a pizza from La Barbara's. <laughs> well, maybe not. We'll be right back. <laughs>